speak. So what do you think was going on with, with Mr Falter then? I mean, did you see that as provocation? Uh, no, that Mr Falter wanted to protest. Um, and he called it a walk. Uh, it was a protest. He was there with others and he was protesting. Okay. Imagine if, if um, a, an anti-Israel uh, agitator uh, started demonstrating uh, walking through a Jewish communal event then I'd expect the police to do something about it. And today, Channel 4 News has seen new exchanges with different officers in different locations. So this guy, Gideon Falter, is completely exposed now. I mean, we have now more videos establishing the fact that he was out there, not with the purpose of just for going for a walk. He was visiting all those places where anti Israel or pro-Palestine marches were taking place with an intention to cause this. So it wasn't his altercation with one police officer. Channel 4 has now broadcast last night another footage establishing how this guy was on multiple locations expressing his desire explicitly to create tension. I think Met Police, instead of apologizing to this guy, should have arrested him and he should be booked even now. There should be a case against him. He should be booked, first of all, defaming the Met Police and disturbing peace. Watch this video. And today, Channel 4 News has seen new exchanges with different officers in different locations. <laughs> As you can see from the subtitles, the officer caught him red-handed when he was told that he had been found crossing those marches multi on multiple occasions. He said, who, who saw that? He asked for the witness and he asked for the identity of the gentleman who had made those allegations. And then he was told that the gentleman in this case was none other than a police officer himself who had found him. And then see his facial expression. Then you have TV channels like ITV, which is continuing to give airtime to this guy to spread his falsehood. I mean, you had uh, this uh, Susanna Reid, who is formerly with the BBC. I had the misfortune of working with her, um, not alongside her, but at the same time when I was also in the BBC. And she was sympathizing as if some extraordinary misfortune had taken place. Nobody was questioning her. Neither she nor Richard Madley, who is another disgrace. Neither of them were uh, questioning him and his account of uh, uh, events. You have to give credit to Lord Mann, who is an independent advisor to the British government on anti-Semitism. And he demolishes everything that this guy Falter, Gideon Falter claimed. Remember his claim was that he was on a walk. Lord Mann says that no, he wasn't on a walk. He was there to stage a counter-protest in favor of Israel. Now, another argument that this guy has been making that what if I was a black person. Would you have stopped that black person? And if there was right wing march taking place, would you have told the black person that you are looking black? Therefore, we cannot allow you. Lord Mann counters that as well. He's also said that what if there was a Muslim man? Would you have stopped? I think, first of all, if there was a Muslim man and a Muslim nation was committing atrocities like Israel has been doing it, I think every Muslim should have been ashamed. I don't think any Muslim would have the would be so shameless to go out and defend those, that genocide, defend that atrocities, defend the brutal murder of over 100,000 people. Only a Zionist can do that. Only a shameless Zionist can do that. And the whole idea is to distract, to deflect the attention so that the global attention does not remain on the Israeli atro atrocities in Gaza. Because as I told you, as I speak, more and more mass graves continue to come up. We are talking about at least, at least 700 people being brutally killed, massacred in, uh, within the Al-Shifa hospital compound by Israeli terrorists disguised as army officials. And then the other, other, other thing that this guy has been saying that 
central London has become no-go areas for Jewish people on the weekend. Lord Mann says, that's rubbish. That's not true. So I'm not saying that. Don't take my, my word for it. Lord Mann, who is the official independent advisor to the British government on anti-Semitism. So what do you think was going on with, with Mr. Falter then? I mean, did you see that as provocation? Uh, no, I think Mr. Falter wanted to protest. Um, and he called it a walk. Uh, it was a protest. He was there with others and he was protesting. Okay. Imagine if, if um, a, an anti-Israel uh, agitator uh, started demonstrating uh, walking through a Jewish communal event, then I'd expect the police to do something about it. Some people have said, you know, parts of London are no-go zones for Jewish people. Do you think that's true? Well, London isn't a no-go zone for Jewish people. It's not a no-go zone at weekends. It's not a no-go zone, and neither must it ever be a no-go zone for anybody. If you have to choose between campaign against anti-Semitism, which should be banned as a charity, in my opinion, and Lord Mann, you should always trust Lord Mann. Oh, he himself is a former MP, now advising the Conservative government on anti-Semitism, and he is discounting, he is demolishing every single argument that this chap, Falter, has been making in order to defame the pro-Palestinian protests. Now, there's another one, which is quite sinister one, and which shows that how his antics have been supported and properly staged and manufactured with the help of Israeli government. So don't think that unrest in Columbia University and attempt to create unrest here in London by the likes of Gideon Falter are in isolation. This has the direct support of Israeli government. And I'm not saying that. This has been discussed widely on social media. Writer Ashok Kumar, he lives in London. He highlighted that the, if you look at the visuals carefully, there is a man providing security to Falter. That man's name is Vicentiu Chikulita. Now, Vicentiu Chikulita works for SQR Group, SQR Security Group. It's a security firm. Now, this security firm was founded by two Israelis many, many years ago. It actually specializes in hiring former British Armed Forces personnel. If you remember, there was a fundraising event in December last year in London at the RSA, Royal Society of Arts. It had become very controversial because and on the day of the event, every single staff member of RSA, they decided to stage a walkout and they joined the picket line because they were not happy with the decision of RSA to provide a platform to the Zionists to indulge in fundraising, which the fund then can be used to kill people, innocent people in Palestine. So that had become quite controversial. The one of the guests who had joined from the British government was Oliver Dowden, who is the Deputy Prime Minister. And Israeli President had joined virtually from Israel in that event. And this man, this security man, was seen providing security even for that event. Now, SQR Group is quite, you know, it's a special case. You must, you must know the details behind it. So this was founded by two Israelis with an aim to recruit former British Armed Forces officials who were made redundant by conservative government. Now, just imagine, British government didn't have money to fund its own armed forces, so therefore brought down the size of British armed forces from 102,000 to 72,000. But it does have three billion pounds to fund a war in Ukraine and many, many millions of pounds to protect Israel when Iran launches the attack. None of these two wars have direct British connection. But this joker, Rishi Sunak, has enough money to fund those wars, but not enough money to fund its own armed forces. Hence, this large-scale redundancies. Now, this SQR group is alleged to have direct links with Mossad, which is the secret service of Israel. 
Now you can imagine. Now you do you still think that this protest by falter and what is happening in Columbia University in America are unrelated? And the presence of a security guy who has a direct link with the Israeli presidential of president's office, do you think there is no correlation? Now that begs a question that this guy falter, there should be a fresh case against him by the Met Police in light of all this evidence. B, there should be an investigation and stringent action against campaign against anti-Semitism, the organization that he heads. Because this organization, any charity in this country, registered charity has to remain impartial, apolitical. But then we have, we have known that this charity has been caught peddling Islamophobia, has been seen taking a political side while launching a campaign against Jeremy Corbyn with false allegations. I think these are the enough reasons for Charity Commission to launch a fresh um, uh, investigation and even consider revoking its license. You know, we have this country as a whole has suffered enough damage. It's incumbent upon, you know, all these agencies like Charity Commissions and Met Police and all to ensure that no further damage is caused by the likes of this falter and the organization that he heads. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.